Hello everybody, it's Assistant Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the T55A, the tier 100 reward from the season pass, currently for Modern Armor. Is it Modern Armor? Why are you no load? Okay. Arms race. Alright, you know what? It's been a minute, you guys. It has. And I, I know that I like to take a year and a half to pump out videos, but I like to take my time on these. Now, the T-55A, this tank, it's it's not too bad. It, it's definitely not bad at all. Now, jumping into the statistics for this tank as we come down. So, base penetration, 229, 221. Um, my brain today, my brain... So smooth. Okay, 330 heat pin, 50 millimeters of high explosive pin. Honestly, the gun's not too bad. If you're struggling with the standard round, swap it to premium, so you have no issues with that. If you don't mind spending a little bit of extra silver, that is. These uh, premium rounds, they are a little bit on the pricier side, especially with a six second reload. So 4,800 per round, you know, and then 5.9 second reload. They are going to be pretty pricey. Now, um, not a lot of tanks in game with 395 view range, but 395 you can get away without really running coded optics if you don't want to, which actually advanced optics now since they changed everything and my brain still likes to go on all the old stuff. But 1750 hit points is a chunky amount. Still concealment 0.27. That's actually some pretty decent still concealment. Top speed of 50. And coming up next, we're looking at rate of fire 7.41, 320 alpha. Penetration already went over that. 8.1 second base reload. As I said, you can get this down to a 5.9 with premium consumables, a advanced loader, and a fully trained crew with the right perks applied. Now, 0.33 accuracy. Uh, that's some insane accuracy on this tank. Uh, next up, 43 rounds. You're going to be feeling like you're going to be uh, mowing through. Oh, that's a lot of blue. Mowing through these rounds like there's no tomorrow. Gun depression, 5 degrees. Not going to be the greatest for handling anything related to gun depression or working a ridgeline uh you're gonna find this tank better off being hauled down but at the same time even being hauled down this tank does lack quite a bit just because they load the heat against the turret on the thickest part of the turret it's only like 266 and i'll jump into that later elevation however 14 degrees not the greatest again but tracks so track traverse speed Turret armor, we have a 240, 180, 65. It's not a bad turret. And the matches that I put inside this tank, inside you know the tier, tier 9 matchmaking that it has, the power to weight that it has to offer at 20 on the dot, you know, this, this tank moves. 20 reverse speed, and then 50 top speed with a 20 overall power to weight. You feel this thing just hauling butt around the battlefield. And in my opinion, the speed of this tank actually makes up for the fact that it has got such low base penetration. So, yeah, it's I feel like my glasses are reflecting my light, but yeah, it, it is what it is. Now, the engine power is 750, uh, track traverse speed 50 degrees. This thing is just mobile like no other. It is extremely aggressive. And as I said, if you're having problems, load the heat. Don't be afraid to do so. Go away, ads. No one likes you. Okay, up next, taking a look at the armor here. And honestly, don't need to really verse any other tank because 330 heat pin <clears throat> is really all we need to see. But 267, between 266 to, you know, yeah, 265 all the way down, going around the sides, depending on the angles. The top armor on this, however, is only 30 millimeters thick, which allows you to overmatch it with 105s or 90 millimeters. 90 millimeter or higher can overmatch the entire top armor of the tank. You have 100 millimeters in the front. You have 80 millimeters on the side. 220 turrets kind of randomized. You got, we'll look at the armor model in more detail on console, but primary, you got a hatch that's uh, 130 millimeters. It's, you know, the hull armor, whenever you have 100 millimeters, a lot of these 100 millimeter tanks, they just don't stand up in head to head fights. And it's really hard to know how to play these tanks. And one of the best way to play these is just side scraping. You got 80 millimeters in side armor. You have no problem side scraping. Along with that, the power to weight and everything else you have to offer playing peekaboo can be perfectly fine. Now, even if you are playing peekaboo and you're handling it correctly, all they really have to do is load in the heat rounds 
and it's going to be just really simple to go through your front armor depending on the uh, penetration of the heat rounds so maintaining the angle to try and help prevent them to go through handle the situation as it comes it it, it can be a pain but at the same time it's it happens it's it is what it is now let's go ahead and jump right into a replay here and as we're jumping into the replay, I'm actually going to be taking off my camera because I want you guys to be able to see the speed, the way this thing moves, mobility, um, crew being damaged. Um, in the couple of matches I did put inside of this tank, I did not put my uh, 50 matches inside this one. I only put a couple of them really inside of it just because it's it works out like a T-54. And with the penetration and everything else this thing has, it's not exactly going to be... The overall greatest fighter. Now, I am sorry about the audio quality. Um, this was right there. You probably just had a big, massive spike. I just, as soon as I started recording, I realized that I had everything set extremely low for whatever reason. And hoping that it's not quiet. I had a couple of them that were extremely quiet and just made me a little bit sad that I messed up. But it is what it is. You know, we're, we're, we're all human. We make mistakes. That's kind of how it goes. There's nothing we can really do about that. But I would say that the T-55A, with everything that this tank has to offer and how it's put together, honestly, it, it's not a bad tank. You know, you have a decent turret combined with a decent turret. You have extremely good mobility. So along with this decent turret, you're able to get to an aggressive position, rely on your turret to ricochet some rounds, and just overall have a little bit more in impact inside the match. Now, with the reworks that they've done with a couple of tier 9 tanks, I find that this one, compared to those ones, it's just lacking and really hard to compare. So, for instance, the M46 Patton, the most recent buff to, 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 did to that tank, and the T-54 with the standard round readjustment, to an APCR from an AP round with 268 or 264 standard penetration from the 218 or 221 that I had originally. It's making a lot of other medium tier 9s that are, have all these low penetrations almost feel obsolete. Now, the T-55A, the way it felt for me as I played this tank, rather than just looking at statistics and checking out a couple of things, it it is a very decent tank. I, I would not say that this would be a go-to for me, but what I can say is, is the way that the reload works inside this tank, you're able to really get that damage out. And coming up in the next replay, I'll be able to show that off really well. And with the standard rounds of this tank, the standard rounds, they're not too bad. If you're looking to make silver inside tier 9, you know, they're, they're 1,230 silver per round. They're a little bit up there compared to most. There's some other tanks in game that you have standard rounds at like 130. For instance, the IS-6, um, there's actually a lot of them. The Talon at tier 7, which in my opinion, uh, the past couple of times I've played the Talon at tier 7, it has been one of the best silver makers I've played in a very long time. Averaging anywhere between like 150,000 shooting nothing but standards to about 220,000 shooting nothing but standards. I don't know if they did it intentionally to leave all the um, rebuy costs for the ammunition at 130 silver per round or if it was on purpose, but it's been like that for an extremely long time. And, you know, just to give you guys a tip if you're looking to make a really good amount of silver inside this game and you're just trying to grind up, don't get me wrong. Performing good, having good matches is going to make you silver. Any premium tank in this game is going to make you silver. But whenever it comes down to it, if you want to mid-max and try to get the best that you can or the highest payout that you can, the Talon at tier 7, the IS-6, and a handful of other tanks, which I'm trying to keep track of and which ones there are, because there's quite a few of them. For instance, the IS-4, the 279E, if you look at their ammunition cost, it's exactly the same. Along with the um, Object 268 version 5, which I've mentioned in the past, that if you shoot nothing but standards out of that, you're making anywhere between 90,000 with a premium account and 50,000 to 40,000 without a premium account. Now, the T55A, 
talking about it as like a competitive standpoint, this tank can be extremely aggressive. Every single time that I pulled this out, I kind of felt like I had a lot more control inside the match just because of my rate of fire that I had. I was able to lock down tracks, hold people in place, along with holding people in place. Um, I had a couple of moments that it was really close to just outright perma track and kill. Uh, but those, for me, they're not as common. They're pretty rare to pop up. But having those moments, it's just, it feels amazing to know that you can just absolutely lock someone down and just prevent them from doing anything. So, T55A, um, where I would put this tank, I, I wouldn't really say it's much of a highly rated tank, but it can be a very, very aggressive tank. With the 330 heat pin that it offers, this thing can be extremely scary on the field, and since everyone's getting their hands on them, and knowing more gaming, more than likely coming in about six months, we're gonna be seeing a massive buff come on this tank because everyone got it for free. Uh, anyone who played during this um, season pass event, that is, if you were looking at this video, let's say like a year or two years down the road, uh, depending on everything that, that has happened to this tank, it is honestly a fantastic tank. More than likely, it'll be a go-to occasionally, and I'll pull it out every once in a while. But whenever it comes down to it, the gun depression is lacking quite a bit. Combined with that, the elevation, not exactly the greatest. The turret, you got really good, decent turret armor in the front with your 240. But primarily, you know, as you slowly go out, you get the auto ricochet angles. You got your 220, 190, 180, and then jumps, you know, slowly starts to decrease until you hit the side of the turret. Now, the armor on this tank, it does work out really well. Right there, I did just ricochet a Jagger around. And what's really nice is coming around corners, side scraping, this tank is able to do it just because it's basically it's thick all around but it's not thick enough to sit in the front. So, T-55A, it's not too bad. It really isn't. The matches I played inside this thing, I have enjoyed it. Now, let's say, is this tank worth the 1,750 gold that they're charging for it? Um... No, I, I would not say that it's worth it. In my opinion, if you're going to be paying for a tank, you would actually be extremely better off going after a tier 10 premium for free experience if you're looking to get a high tier tank. Uh, for instance, the Object 260 would be a really good choice to get your hands on. Uh, up next would be... T22 Medium's not too bad with the most recent buff that they applied to it. And as my brain continues to fart, the Quillen Tier 10 Chinese, which still, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful Tier 10s inside the game, and one of the main reasons why I do not play it too often, just because you have 560 Alpha, 340 Heat Pin, and a 9.2 second reload with an absolutely monstrous turret, 7 degrees of gun depression, just a fantastic tank. You'd be better off investing your money trying to go for a higher tier tank like that. Or, taking that 17,000 gold, getting a tier 7, getting a tier 8, and actually focusing on trying to get a little bit more premium time. And just getting your grinds to have a little bit more of an ease. Now, Arctic Region, this is one of those maps that... There's a lot of positions on this map that are always... I, I feel like each time I play this map, I learn something new. And... This position, I've actually taken... A lot of tanks too as of recent just because it feels extremely powerful i've had a 705a in this position tier 10 russian heavy tank with a big fat 152 millimeter gun and i was able to stay concealed and fire almost freely depending on the distance that they were from me or how close i was to the first bush in front now this position um, I, I do kind of want to mention this and try and get it not as powerful for heavy tanks, but this is where it, it's just like, wow, I, I can't believe I just found this out. 
the other day, to be completely honest with you. Last couple times I played. And there we go, Malbreaker, one of the uh, tier 8s that got a buff with that 200mm hatch that we bounced off of with standard rounds with 221 pin. So, you know, totally balanced, guys. Totally balanced. That's how it should be. So, you know, immediately just going to tap that A button, loading the heat rounds. No hesitation there. You know, with the low penetration of 221, you want to take a decent amount of uh, premium rounds just to give you that extra little bit that you're going to need. Just because 221 against tier 10s, you're going to struggle a lot. So, firing nothing but standards out of this. If you're doing that, you're going to find yourself lacking, falling behind, and not maintaining damage or feeling like you can't exactly influence the flank too much. But that doesn't mean load nothing but heat rounds. Doing that, no. You still need your standard rounds because they're still overmatching in the game. Uh, there's still spaced armor in the game and helping load those standards in to try and, you know, handle the spaced armor and handle overmatching. It's always a good choice. Along with that, high explosive rounds. Since this tank has got such a random number of 43 rounds i would actually say to take three high explosives just because taking he rounds in general is always a good idea never sacrifice he just because if you do run into that lightly armored tank guess what rather than only doing 300 damage per shot you're now hitting him for 400 damage 500 damage and he's only hitting you for let's say four um in my opinion it, it's a great trade-off just to sacrifice two or three rounds. Some of my tanks, I actually load 10 or so high explosives. For instance, E100, 60 TP. I do like to load a very decent amount of them just because you can splash haul down tanks and try and prevent them to push forward. But, yeah, I, I can definitely say T55A, the rate of fire feels amazing. Uh, standard penetration, not super impressive. Premium pin, however, golden number at 340. Now, talking about it, um, past couple of days, I, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, I've actually been streaming on Twitch, and I have a couple of people who do watch me. You know, I'm not saying, come check me out, you guys. No, it's just, if you want to see a variety of games that I play or some other stuff that I do, or if you have questions or anything else, I'm going to drop a link down in the, the description of this video for my Discord. And if you guys would like to jump in there, best way to get a hold of me is to send me a private message on Discord. I do try my best to get back to everyone that does message me. So if you do have any questions and, you know, you find the link, send me a message. Honest to God. By this point, I'm monologuing and I don't have a script. I never have a script. And I'm just running out of stuff to say. Yeah, that's literally where I'm at. Then again, it's like 90% of the time I upload anymore. I don't know what to say. I do all my standard stuff, which is talking about the tank. It, it, it's kind of what I do. I, I take a tank out. I play it quite a bit. I, I've played a lot of tanks. I've been playing tanks for over nine years. I've played on PC. I, I've played a little bit of Blitz. Blitz is pretty fun. But the fact that I have eight Kalabanov's medals in 220 matches is uh, kind of absurd. So I stopped playing it. Just because I, I I feel like I have too much of an advantage on Blitz with mouse and keyboard. And I'd be better off playing it on the Switch or my phone to help try and, you know, balance out the field. But then you do end up against those PC players and they just have got such better aim. And the Switch, honest to God, too much latency. It's Wi-Fi. Too much latency. It lags a lot. It was horrid. But I, I would definitely say that... As time goes on, World of Tanks is one of my main games, and I enjoy World of Tanks a lot. But at the same time, I, I do struggle to make content. I do. And that's just because it's taking the time out to sit here for 20 minutes, or 30 or 40 minutes, and to come up with some stuff, and find a couple things to cover, talk about. It, it can be a little tedious at times. So, I might lower the time of the videos. I might just do one match, talk about my opinion of tanks going forward and yeah, later in the future as time goes on and everything else. But primarily, I'm here as much as I can be and a part of the community to help out as much as I can. 
So if there's anything you guys would like me to cover in the future, please let me know by sending me a Discord message, dropping a comment down in the section, giving the video a like, or maybe even sharing the video, telling your friends about me, doing whatever you can. I mean, honestly, promoting myself, I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> However, as I can never seem to clear my throat, no matter how hard I try, the only thing that I do on World of Tanks, and the original reason why I started my YouTube channel, is because I want to make sure, whenever I log into this game, and every single match that I play, I know that every single person knows exactly what they're doing. And I'm not saying that people are bad. I have my moments that I am an absolute Muppet, and I do the stupidest things that you can ever think of. But the thing is, is that whenever you see a heavy tank running out in the open and just stopping and sitting there the entire time, or let's say artillery, which artillery, honest to God, and a little bit still broken, hitting people for about a thousand damage, you know, two thousand damage, one shotting a tier 10, or APing the side of a mouse with three AP shells with a platoon of three T92s, honestly, I um, would like to see artillery limited to one per platoon. And maybe two per match, rather than three. <clears throat> or, depending on where they drop the rework for artillery, which I'm honestly hoping they do, to see the damage decreased by half and penetration decreased by half. Now, keep in mind, that's actually PC standard, and it's been like that for years. However, the HE rework that PC recently has done, I would not say to implement, because that would make artillery completely obsolete, and there's no point in doing that. But, with not really much to say, um, Slap a Fish, if you guys don't know about him, check him out. He's absolutely fantastic. I've played with the guy a few times, um, I've talked with him quite a bit, and he's not a bad guy. Honestly, he's pretty chill, extremely laid back, pretty fun to chat with, not gonna lie. Slap, if you're watching this, just know, I like you, man. No homo. But the bromance will be there. So till next time, you guys, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm going to be dropping a link down in the description for my Discord if you guys would like to join that. Other than that, have a fantastic day, and I will catch you all on the battlefield. Until next time, I'm out of here.